here is my definitive perspective on dating men as a straight woman in your 20s. That's something we all need more of on TikTok, am I right? The perspective is you're driving yourself nuts trying to figure these boys out. Save men for later. I'm not even kidding. Like save it for a different part of your life. All men are a little bit bad. No offense, sorry. Just like our society is not built for women to succeed. Men are not built to want to see you succeed. Sorry. Even the most supportive men, like subconsciously, they might want to fuck you over, okay? They don't even know that they want to, but they kind of sabotage your success. They do when you're young, because they do get threatened deep down, even if they don't mean to. In your younger years, in the years where you're like building your career, find contentment alone. Fill your life, like make your life full. Now I can say that I'm content and happy and have no voids to fill in my life as many times as I want. The internet will never believe a girl saying that, so I'm not gonna like drive it home to you, but you'll just have to believe me if you want. I'm not opposed to having a partner, but they are coming into an already full life, so they either make it better, or they're worthless. And I, again, the internet will never believe me when I say this, but you can believe it if you want. I will be perfectly content if that cherry on top guy never shows up, or if he does when I'm like 50, which is what I think will happen. The objective of my life is not to find my missing piece. I am the objective. I am why I live my life. Now, a huge reason I'm able to say this and a lot of people might not relate is because I've never wanted kids. The idea of raising people never called to me, but if it does for you, then maybe my philosophy will not apply. Or maybe it'll make you want to look into ways to have kids without a man. Maybe, I don't know. My point is build your own life and your own happiness let the soulmate thing find you and work his way into your life oh so here's the thing you have to stop centering men in your life and pursuing them and chasing them and auditioning for them and trying to be chosen so badly by a man you're literally ruining your own life and it's never gonna get you anywhere besides with toxic men who don't truly value you or stuck in the same pattern of relationships what you really need to do if you want to live a better life and a more embodied life is focus on yourself decenter men from your life and center yourself in your life put yourself back into focus invest in yourself embody your true your true purpose and your desires and stop playing small with like what you want in a man stop being the chill girl stop being the chill girl stop doing that right now rat girl summer is also a summer of decentering men so here are five things you can do instead of focusing on relationships number one steal as i've said before i am a supporter of burglarizing the homes of those who have wronged you I also encourage stealing snacks and office supplies from your workplace if they are available. You may also choose to escalate this and steal from your big box store of your choice that's likely participating in wage theft. For legal purposes, this is a joke. Number two, shake your ass. I've said before that life is about two things and two things alone. Being obsessed with yourself and shaking your ass. Instant endorphin boost. Get on it. Number three, lie to strangers. Again, another endorphin boost and low-key a great way to manifest by proclaiming things that you want to happen for the future. Alternatively, you could just pretend to be fucking insane because what does it matter? They don't know you. Number four, make a dentist appointment. You know your ass needs a cleaning. And number five, literally anything else is a better use of your time than centering men and the desire for romantic love in your life. If you're the kind of person that chooses your nails, your clothes, your hair, what you do for work, anything because you're interested in getting male attention, I am urging you to remove the shackles and free yourself. Rat Girl Summer is about liberation to freedom. You gotta understand, we live a totally different life. I don't have kids. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm trying to say? I don't yeah. have to go as hard. The key to decentering men is to center yourself and work on every other part of your life before worrying about getting a boyfriend. Because if you're maintaining your vibes, then you'll want only people who are adding to the vibe to be in your life. If your vibes are all over the place because you haven't put in the time and effort to maintain it, then anything goes. You'll let anything come through. You'll entertain bullshit because you haven't taught yourself how to have a low tolerance for bullshit. Speaking from experience, anytime I've entertained poor quality <laughs> validation from a guy, it's because I'm avoiding some other part of my life. Usually when we're seeking external validation, we're trying to compensate for an internal problem. 
This is different for everybody, but some examples might be if you feel insecure in your physical appearance, you will seek attention and validation through sex because a lot of women who are like hot objectively make terrible decisions in love because they haven't learned to validate themselves from within. They're used to external validation, but being told you're hot doesn't mean that you believe you're hot necessarily. So that's an example. Another example might be if you don't have healthy friendships, then you will think that getting a boyfriend will circumvent the need to find friends. But I think it's more important, especially when you're young, to learn how to cultivate healthy and diverse friendships because being in a healthy relationship requires like a friendship kind of bond first and then sexual intimacy and commitment later in my opinion. So if you don't know how to be a good friend, you don't necessarily know how to find a partner that can be your friend and also your lover type thing. Another example, which is usually what happens to me, if I'm trying to avoid making some kind of career move, I will allow a guy to distract me from having to put the work in and build the courage to make whatever career move I need to make. And when everything starts going south, I'm back where I started. I still have to confront the thing that I was avoiding, but I'm behind schedule because I allowed myself to get bamboozled or to be distracted unnecessarily. So decentering men means that you need to center yourself. When you've put in the effort to cultivate a life that you enjoy and you feel good about, you will only want men that add to the vibe to be in your life. Any guy that starts taking away from what you've worked so hard to achieve, goodbye. You've got a, and it sounds bad, but you've got a show that you just don't give a shit. Ladies, I need you to go watch that entire clip and then go around social media and look at the Andrew Tates, the Kevin Samuels of the world, look at the manosphere, look at all the men just like that man coming to the public square and finally saying the quiet part out loud that if women like me say it we're called angry and bitter and jealous men are saying out loud on podcasts giving advice to other men making it clear that they do not like women value women respect women or see them as human beings that man is literally on a podcast telling other men to treat women like shit and treat them badly. Why are we not listening? Seeing what they're saying, seeing that they how they view women, and collectively deciding to tap out, put our self interest first, and only deal with men that are not like that, and if, or just not deal with them at all and completely decenter men. Men are not hiding how they view women. They are across social media, across the world, telling y'all how they view us. Like, that, look, like, I don't understand why a lot of women are not seeing this, taking notes, and being like, okay, I'm, only for, I'm out for me now. I'm putting my self-interest as a woman first. I'm not settling, and I'm not going to center men or relationship with them in my life because look at how y'all see us. Like, I just, I just, I don't know how women can see content like this and not take, like, just, com just make a choice to not orient their life around men, decenter men, and or only deal with men that treat them right. Instead, women are just on the or like. It's a, I know we're conditioned. I know patriarchy conditions women and misogyny con conditions women to think a certain way. But at this point, I'm like, how how long are y'all gonna like look at men, say they hate women, and not like change your life and choose to be indifferent towards them and just live your life outside of them? And if you choose to engage a relationship with them, make sure it's absolutely what you want. Don't give them the benefit of the doubt. Clearly, that man isn't giving women the benefit of the doubt. Look how look at how they. Talk about women as if we're nothing. They don't give you the benefit of the doubt. Go, don't give them a benefit of the doubt. Like, I just I just don't understand what's going on with this. We need to go back to the drawing board. Because, like, men are telling y'all every day they can't stand y'all. 
not all, I hate to have to say that, but there's a lot of men who can't stand y'all and y'all not pivoting what you do. I think we can now pivot from like talking about men, right? Like, like at all. Like there's no more deep critical analysis required. What are our next steps? Are we starting like a business? Are we opening up a cute little flower shop, a cafe shop? Like let's start working towards an existence where like we forget that like they exist. I think we can now pivot from like talking about men, right? Like, like at all, like. So recently I've been seeing a lot of stuff on my For You page about decentering men. And I think, just watch our whole post because it's a good post, but I think the next conversation is about that in between. Because that is the phase where it's the absolute hardest. You don't go from decentering men <laughs> to living your best life. Because you're unlearning patriarchy, you're unlearning years of conditioning you have a tendency to backslide board peace looks like boredom you don't know who you are outside of these identities that they said you should have by a certain age so i know my story is my story and i've decentered men a long time ago and people still look at me weird so i think the next conversation should be how can we support each other men on the internet are very upset with the descriptor he's just ken barbie law being that men existed from the very beginning as like an add-on for barbie's storyline men don't understand that ken is an accessory in barbie lore yet have no problem making women accessories to their lives they're mad that barbie is the one with the job she's the doctor she's the president she has the house, she has the car, right? And Ken is just there, sitting beside her, looking pretty. And they don't like that. The roles are completely reversed in Barbie lore. And we can see that. We are the center of our own lives with Barbie. We are the main characters. And it never occurs to men that women can be the main characters and men very secondary ones because men see us as the accessories we are the cans in men lore i've seen a lot of conversations on here recently about decentering men which i'm all for fully support but usually the conversations are kind of about how you know all of your life you've been kind of dating someone talking to someone seeking out a relationship or you know making decisions based on someone else and you kind of want to get away from that now and i feel like i have a different perspective on this because i've had kind of an opposite experience so i want to talk about it in case other people relate to this but as someone who didn't grow up with like adolescent high school relationships didn't even really date in college like i would talk to people and you know have crushes but never like serious things I don't think I ever really centered men as far as my priorities. Like I was very much someone who sought out external validation still, but not from other people. It was like from academic success, social media, YouTube, that kind of thing, where it might've been external, but it was still focused on me. So in that sense, I feel like I was able to kind of build my own identity, know what I like, what I want to do and make my own decisions, not based on someone else, which is all great, fine, well, and good. And I appreciate a lot about that now, but does anyone else now who might be like more of a late bloomer feel like they have a hard time trying to prioritize that, especially if you're someone who like wants a long-term relationship, partnership, et cetera. And I have had relationships and dated since then in adulthood, but I haven't like ever been the place where that's been my number one priority. So I'm like great on my own. I love what I've built. I'm proud of myself. I know who I am but almost to the point of like do i really need someone else to bring it in i don't know but again like that is what i want so i'm just asking in case other people have this experience of like yes you want a relationship but because you weren't prioritizing it in your like formative years and youth and you didn't center men then it's almost like hard to center relationships in that kind of aspect now in dating so i don't know what do you guys think of this if you have the same experience like growing up do you think that's affected how you prioritize relationships and dating and men now not even sure if this made sense but let me know what your thoughts are on this because i think it is a really interesting conversation and i hope i'm not alone in it <laughs>
I was celibate for two years and I decentered men actively in that two year time span. So I'm gonna tell you guys how I did it. I realized that ever since I hit puberty, there was never a period where I wasn't engaging with or entertaining some type of relationship with a man, whether that was something that was me just entertaining something stupid or me actually being in a relationship. There was never a period where I was actively not talking to any man at all. And as a result, so much of my time and energy was spent engaging with men that weren't the quality that I was actually looking for just because I was uncomfortable with the quietness and the solitude of solely my own energy if I wasn't engaging with any men. So the first thing that I did was I made a commitment to cut off any men for a minimum of two years. So I didn't engage with any male friends. I completely took myself into a period of solitude for about two years, around like a year and a half. And I actively did this because I literally thought of it as if I was breaking an addiction or fasting. And I think that a lot of women don't see it like that in our society and that's a problem because we don't realize that we are literally addicted to male validation, male attention, and male relationship. And outside of male relationship, we feel very uncomfortable in our own solitude and in our own energy. And so decentering men for me looked like taking a literal sabbatical and going on a period of celibacy and singleness where I was actively recentering myself back into my life. So I traveled alone, I went to Spain, I went to Portugal, actually I went to Portugal with a friend, but I went to Spain and I went to other countries by myself. I went to Ibiza, which is an island off of Spain. I went to Barcelona, I went to Madrid, all by myself. I guess I just traveled a lot in Spain. But I traveled and I created hobbies and I read books and I started going to therapy and I did a lot of healing work and I started to really enjoy my own energy outside of male attention and male relationship so instead of constantly feeling like i needed to be texting someone or be in some sort of interaction with a male to feel secure and valuable in my life i decentered that completely and began to actually just enjoy my own company taking myself on dates going to the park by myself that was like a ritual of mine i would go to this park in madrid Every day I would read for hours and I just started to enjoy genuinely being alone. I would go to coffee shops by myself. I would go to restaurants and take myself on dates. I actively decentered men from my life and recentered myself by starting to literally date myself, build myself up, and learn who I was in my own energy outside of relationship to men. Just dropped a YouTube video on this, go watch. This is the probably one of the most important rules to decentering men, and that is realizing that that yearning and that aching that you feel that has absolutely nothing to do with your romantic partners or your romantic interests. Most of the time, that feeling is unresolved issues from your childhood. It's how you speak to yourself internally. It's the things that you tell yourself when you want to try things. That's the thing that breaks you down. Those are the things that create that yearning or that aching or that unhappiness. Not a lack of partnership because partnership, it's a great addition, but it's a great addition. That means you need to be full, you need to be whole, and they can complement the happiness that you've already created. But depending on men for your own happiness, it's the worst thing you can do. And that is what people do often when they're dating, when they're in relationships, their hope is that men are going to create the happiness that they've been yearning for. And that's just not the case. This is your daily reminder that decentering men from your life is a daily practice. Decentering male approval. Okay, this is such a beautiful, beautiful video. And it got me thinking about the ways that I am currently trying to practice in order to decenter men. And something that I realized is that it can be fairly easy to have this external approach where you don't focus so much on your dating life and you get off dating apps. But it's a whole other thing when you try to address it internally. And one of the things that I am very curious to discover is what fills up the space that centering men is currently taking up? Because something that happens to me a lot is that my autopilot is being 
very aware of my appearance and not just how I dress or how I do my makeup or how I do my hair, but small things like my posture and how I speak and my gestures. Like it's the male gaze on steroids. And that's the first thing I'm trying to tackle. Let's talk about this because I think centering men is the default for pretty much every woman I know of, unless you are raised in some kind of matriarchal society or family. And I think I have an interesting perspective because I was raised in a matriarchal family. There is only one man in my entire family and it's my 30 year old brother. Every other person in my family is a woman and single woman at that who were single mothers. And the only exception being my sister and her wife. And the reason I'm bringing this up at all is I feel like because my family has been set up that way my whole life, it gave me this realization very early on that men are not to be depended on because they are not that dependable a lot of the time. It also gave me the perspective of the life that I create for myself should be a life that I want to live rather than building a life around men and the traditional values that society tries to teach over here in like the Western world, the United States. And my family is white and Hispanic for context. So there are those like traditional kind of Catholic values thrown in there too. But nonetheless, I was not raised with the mindset of find a man to take care of you, to provide for you. I was raised with the mindset of get an education, go get a career you like doing, spend time having like close female friendships and friends that you really value. And a man is just like this thing to also have in your life. And it's not like the women in my family and in my life don't respect men. It's just that they treat men more like accessories, these nice to have things and people to only have in your life if they're going to make your life better. Whereas I think the way a lot of people are raised, it's that men are essential. They are necessary. They are the pillar of the family. They are the head of the household. They are this um, person to chase and try to like peacock for and show off to get a really nice mate. They are centered. And I'm not trying to shame women who do center men. In fact, I want to highlight the fact that I think it's sad that we're still, even in 2023, suffering from the things we do. Like, look at our politics. Like, politics feels like the state of politics in the United States is going backwards, although we very much probably want to see it moving forward. And that being said, for women, just like societally in the United States, what I still see is women very much still centering men. And I think that that just continues to rob women of our happiness, of having hobbies and balance in our life. I still see, you know, so many women who are raised with the mindset of even if you go to college and you get a good job and you achieve all these things, that's just something to eventually brag about to a man. And a really good example of this is that trend where it's like, me when I get to tell my husband I'm like a humanitarian lawyer like that's their flex you know what I mean I think we are progressing in response to this comment I do think we are progressing absolutely but I think there is actively an attack on women's rights right now because they have seen they the world has seen what women do when we no longer center men and it scares the life out of them they always try to convince us that we need them because we once did but now we don't and they don't like that here are some ways to decenter men. Number one, deprioritize finding a romantic relationship with a man and planning your future and dreams around that relationship. Imagine a more multifaceted path to happiness. You can do things like think about the way queer communities find happiness without centering cishet men. We can think outside the box. Number two, if you do date men, be your authentic self on dates and don't diminish your opinions or your actions so as not to offend or scare off a man. Number three, don't tailor your physical appearance for men and don't apologize for your body or any of its features or functions. Number four, devalue men's sexual desire for you. Men's desire is abundant and of low value and I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news but if men want to fuck you that doesn't validate anything about you as a person. It might feel nice but it's an objective thing that means nothing. Number five, become the main character of your own life. So it's your needs, your dreams and your goals that come first and take the vast bulk of your energy. To that end, Maybe get rid of the relentless boy chat when talking to your women friends. It's a great reinforcement of the fact that they are not the most important thing in your life. And finally, remember all the ways that men, the patriarchy and masculinity let us down. On my Instagram, there's a pinned post at the top called why I'm a feminist. That should really help.